everyone, this is Alan Fire, back with a new Visionary FX tutorial. In this episode, we're going to do something very cool, yes, very cool. We're going to learn how to make a stock footage element extend infinitely long or arbitrarily long, such that you will never encounter an unwanted end. And uh, we're going to do this to where the beginning of the stock footage is a continuation of the end of the stock footage. Now I've seen other techniques where the stock footage loops, but there's an obvious kind of ugly transition in order to do so. But basically, we have a very clear goal or objective in this tutorial, which is to make that transition as inconspicuous and as camouflaged as possible. This is going to be fun. Uh, just a quick note before I go into the action, if you appreciate the work I put into these videos, please see how you can support this channel by clicking the support link in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and drag our footage into a new composition. This footage is from ActionVFX.com. ActionVFX is one of the trendy companies happening right now in the visual effects community. Awesome stuff going on there. Check it out. So you guys know what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this stock footage loop. So in other words, it can just keep playing over and over again. You, there's never an end. It just seamlessly repeats. Um, so right now there's a problem. If we go to this end frame, when we go back to the beginning, then it jumps to a different position, so it doesn't seamlessly loop. So that's what we're going to make today. We're going to make this footage somehow seamlessly repeat over and over again. Okay, so here's how this works. What I'm going to do is take off a little bit of this beginning part here. What I'm going to do is click on the footage, hit Control shift d That's going to cut the footage. And uh, the important thing to note here is that the end of this clip is the beginning of this next clip. Or it's a continue this clip is a continuation of the end of this clip. That's the essence of how we're going to do this loop. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to move this beginning piece all the way to the end. So like I said, the end of this is the beginning of this. So that's, that's what causes the loop. So we just move this back and then grab this trim this forward a little bit right click trim comp to work area so hopefully you guys see what we're doing so far so the beginning is a continuation of the end okay so the only problem is that we created another jump right see if we have a look here it's the it's the first stock footage and then it jumps to the beginning that's the problem now so there's different ways we can go about um, smoothening this transition if we can smoothen out this transition then we have seamless looping stock footage and that's what we want so the first way is just to animate the opacity um, you can quickly open the opacity to, by hitting T or just uh, opening the parameter here transform opacity uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe this opacity so here at the beginning we'll turn the opacity all the way down to zero hit a keyframe there let's go forward and let's turn the opacity up all right, so maybe that fade will help sell the transition and make it less conspicuous. Okay, looking a little bit better. It's a little bit more smooth, a little bit less jumpy. But there's still a problem here, and that is we have some like we have like two layers of transparent fire, and, and that just doesn't look right. We can tell there's a fade. We because instead of how it usually is, just one thick solid fire layer. We now have two faded transparent uh, fires blended together, and that's really an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that opacity animation. Just click the stopwatch here and gets rid of the keyframes. And what I'll actually do is uh, make a new solid, Control Y, or go to Layer New Solid, and I'm going to call this Reveal Map. And so instead of animating the opacity, we're going to create a reveal map that blends with the fire much better and we're not going to have that double faded flame look. So the first effect I'm going to add to this reveal map is a linear wipe. It's in the transition category. Apply this to the uh, new solid. So what I actually want to do is rotate the wipe angle like that and uh, let's go to the beginning here. I'm going to turn the transition completion all the way up to 100. Add a keyframe. We can hit on the keyboard U to open up the uh, keyframe parameters. Let's just move forward to the end here and turn the transition completion down to zero. So we're going to have, if I solo this layer, you can see we're going to have a animation. And uh, actually I wanted to animate from the bottom to the top, so I can just rotate this wipe angle like this. So it's going to animate from the bottom to the top. So this is going to be the reveal mat. If you don't know what a mat is, you're going to find out by the end of this video. Cool stuff. The next thing we're going to do is, is apply a fast blur effect. So just the regular fast blur. And if you got the new version of After Effects, it's called Legacy because, you know, they're trying to do more advanced stuff. But, you know, this fast blur works perfect here. 
we're just gonna add a little bit of blur maybe 15 pixels let's hit repeat edge pixels just like that and uh, we want to make sure this uh, this reveal mat is animating about the same speed as the fire so as the fire moves upward the reveal mat needs to move with the fire so it blends with the motion of the fire so it's less conspicuous all right and the next thing we need to do is make this mat turbulent like the you know the turbulent essence of the fire so let's uh gee what kind of effect can we do to add turbulence maybe turbulent displace you know that that might just uh add some turbulence yeah so turbulent displace let's turn the complexity up to about eight something like that that's going to blend with the texture of the fire much better Yes, looks much better. And you can see here towards the beginning, it, uh, there's not as much turbulence, and that's because we pinned all the edges. We could do a no pinning, but actually some pinning would be good. So we'll just pin all, because um, we don't really need much turbulence towards the bottom anyway. Yeah, this will work just fine. And uh, one last adjustment I'll do is I like to animate the offset turbulence to kind of go along with the animation. Makes it a little bit smoother. So let's add a keyframe to the turbulent offset. Let's move forward, and we'll just animate this upward. To kind of move with the uh, reveal upward animation, maybe something like that. Not quite, just so that it doesn't, just so that it kind of trails behind, so it doesn't keep up um, completely. Yeah, just like that. Like I said, we don't want this turbulent offset animation to animate perfectly with the transition completion animation because we still want it to change and evolve a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So now we're finished with our reveal map. And I tried to cover this in detail, but really, you can create something like this fast. There's only three effects, pretty simple adjustments. There's no, like, complex details you got to make. I just, it just took kind of a long time because I'm explaining all the details. But when you're creating this on your own, it's not going to take very long at all. You can do this fast. So how this is going to work is we're going to go to the end piece here, and we're going to go to the track mat. If you don't see this track mat column here, um, just toggle switches uh, until you see it. There's only two sets of switches, so... <laughs> within one click you'll see it if you don't already see it all right and what we'll do is go to the in piece track mat drop down menu and let's choose alpha mat because we want this in piece to exist where the reveal mat exists so that's that's how track mats work so based on the alpha information this in piece is only going to exist where the layer above it exists so so for instance the mat only exists in this place, but since the end piece is doing alpha mat, the end piece only exists in that same place as well. So hopefully that makes sense. That should make sense. Okay, so this is looking pretty radical, but there's probably a few things we can do to smooth this out a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on all the layers and see what we have so far. I'm going to turn on this bottom fire layer, and let's see how seamless this loop is. Not bad, not bad. We can see, l still see little um, signs of it. It's not completely perfect, but what we'll do is just kind of pay attention to see like what's wrong, what's noticeable about this, and how can we blend this in a little bit better. All right. So the first thing I notice is uh, towards the bottom here, we have kind of a kind of a conspicuous reveal. We can see the line, you know, wi wiping, revealing the new flame. So there's a couple things I'm gonna do to fix this. First thing I'm gonna hit U to open up the keyframes. I'm going to make this uh, this first keyframe here on the transition completion be an easy ease keyframe. So I can hit F9 or click this button here. Boom. So, it, so it's going to do it slower and more smooth. And also this makes sense because as the fire rises it begins to it accelerates upward so the speed increases as it goes upward so that it also makes sense to you know do an easy ease towards the beginning so that so it kind of accelerates the value. Okay, I think that helps, but there's still kind of a noticeable change here. And uh, to fix this, what I'll probably do is add more fast blur towards the beginning. So I'll bring in another traditional uh, obsolete flat fast blur effect. Just turn up the fast blur value here, like this. And uh, kind of go towards the beginning, add a keyframe. And as it goes towards the middle here, we want to turn the fast blur all the way down. Okay, and let's hit U to open up those keyframes. Just select both of them F9 so they're easy ease. And uh, I think that should help. Alright, that's definitely an improvement. Uh, and also, we can slightly see the texture of the new reveal. Um, you know, right here, sort of, we can see the kind of line here. And uh, what I'll kind of do to help out with that as much as I can is uh, add a new fast blur effect and change this to vertical, the blur dimensions. And we just inc 
increase the vertical blur a little bit like this not much just like that and I'll double click on the fast blur effect go to the compositing options and turn down the opacity of the effect so it's just kinda helps blend in just a little bit maybe that'll help remember we can always play around with these settings to make it blend in as best as possible as good as possible so we can turn this fast blur here maybe increase the turbulence all kind of stuff so so let's see let's check out a preview okay not bad at all like I said I'm trying to explain things in detail so it's taking a little bit longer um, but while you're just creating this on your own, it should be a really quick and easy effect to create. Okay, that's it. We should be finished with the looping effect. So now I'm going to show you guys a cool way to make your footage repeat. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the fire, and let's say we drag this fire into a new composition. So we've got a scene that's pretty long. Maybe let's say this scene's like uh, 40 seconds long. So we could either just, now that, this, now that the footage is seamless, we could duplicate this and just do one after the other like this. That is an option, but I've got a better option, which is more advanced and more, and more filled with awesomeness, which is to add a looping expression. So how do we do this? Because you definitely want to learn how to do this because this is cool stuff. Um, so what we do is right click on the footage, go to time, enable time remapping, and we apply the expression to this time remapping parameter, because essentially that's what it's doing, so looping the time, or repeating the time. Uh, so, you see, so you can see here we have the time value increasing as we move forward in time, you know the time is proportional, basically y equals x on a graph, and so what we're going to do is go one frame before this last keyframe, because the last keyframe is actually... Uh, on the frame where the footage is ended already. So let's go one frame before that. Let's go. Let's add a keyframe there. And let's go to this last keyframe and turn the value down to zero. Okay, so you can see our little animation there. It goes all the way to the end, then it, boom, goes all the way back down to zero. And if we extend the end of this layer, you can see it goes, it's going to continue, but it paused there. But we need the, these keyframes to repeat. So we can, so here's where the expression comes in. What we can do is hold alternate, click the stopwatch, boom, that allows us to add an expression. But instead of typing expression, what you can do is open up the like After Effects expression inventory, go down here to the property category, and let's choose a loop out. Not loop in, loop in is for losers, we do loop out. Not really, loop in is cool. Let's do loop out and uh, check out what happens. Let's go to the graph so we can see the value. Let's um, enable the graph for the expression. Boom, check out what happened. The, the keyframe value is now repeating over and over and over again, so it's looping. And uh, no matter how far we extend out this layer, it's just going to keep looping those keyframes to where it just repeats over and over again. Now, I kind of want to explain what I did here, um, why I had to make this zero keyframe here. So let's, let's, let's just say we delete this keyframe, boom. Uh, and then let's pay attention to what's happening down here on the graph. So you can see here we're at the last keyframe of the first footage, and also... And then we go to the next frame, then it's the second frame on the beginning of the footage. So we don't want that. We actually want the next frame to be the first frame on the beginning of the footage. So what we can do, if we add a keyframe here, which is zero, boom, then it's going to be the first frame. It's going to be time equals zero, the first frame. So we want it just like that. And uh, as far as this expression goes, you don't want to make any changes. You want no number of keyframes equals zero, and that's just going to adapt to how many keyframes you have. If you actually set in a value here, um, you're going to get some bad results. So let's just keep it at zero so it adapts to the number of keyframes we have. Or you could specify, let's do like three keyframes. If you know you're going to have three, that'd be fine too. So basically saying it's going to loop those three keyframes. So basically we can have this, this same video sequence loop as many times as we want for the rest of eternity if need be. Alright, I'm hoping you guys found this video to be an enjoyable, productive use of your time. I try to fill these videos with different layers of information. On the highest layer, or on kind of a large scale, these tutorials reveal the route by which complex effects and projects are created. Uh, on a lower level, we learn all kinds of different tricks and techniques which you can apply to other projects and build on your creative mindset. And even still, on a lower level, these tutorials are just filled with the use and explanation of software controls and features. Anyway, remember to leave a like if you found this episode enjoyable or helpful. Uh, subscribe for more Visionary FX. Remember to check out the support link in the description. That's really helpful and I really appreciate that. My name is Alan Fire, and until next time, I'll leave you to it.